All right. Um, today I want to focus on troubleshooting um, your application because so far we've gone over Ajax applications and everything has gone smoothly, I think, for the most part. And we really haven't had to spend a lot of time troubleshooting. But anytime you have more than one component involved in something, your troubleshooting becomes more complicated um, because it's unclear where the problem is. So in the case of Ajax, you have client side code, you have server side code, which means not that there's two possibilities, but really there's three possibilities. I guess it depends how you score it. Um, the problem could be with the client side code, the problem could be with the server side code, or the problem could be the manner in which the client side and server side code communicate. So, it is important to have a systematic approach for debugging um, and, and trying to figure out what's wrong. Um, otherwise, you're going to waste a lot of time if, if your approach is just sort of staring at the code, hoping that the right answer jumps out at you. So let's look at the quiz example that we had last time. And then we will discuss trying to troubleshoot it. So, we go to localhost quiz.html. I copy the files over while the projector was warming up. We get our quiz. I can answer. By the way, there was a problem at the very end of, of the lecture last time. The problem was just as simple as I forgot to move my code over from the desktop to the web server's location. So that's all that was wrong with the code that we were looking at last time. Um, I should have both of these right, and there we go. Both of them are indeed correct. All right. Now with Ajax, remember that we have a situation where the client side has responsibilities and the server side has responsibilities. The client side is responsible for creating the request object. It's responsible for making a request for the uh, to the server. Then it's responsible for handling the response from the server. So if we can look at our code here, we can isolate what each of the parts are. All right. These two functions are responsible for creating the request object. All right. As I mentioned before, this is outside of any function, which means it loads as soon as a page loads, and it executes as soon as a page loads. Therefore, this object, this HTTP object, is available anytime we need it. 
all right, is created by calling this function, create request object, it does a little bit of browser detection because the manner in which you create your request object is different whether you're on Internet Explorer or you're on other browsers. But regardless, when it's done, it returns a request object, and that request object gets stored in the variable HTTP. All right. When I click the button, that executes process form, which right now does a pseudo validation. In other words, it just assumes that the form is valid, and then it processes get results. Get results is the code that creates a request for the server. And it does so by formatting the URL first of all. The URL that needs to be called for this to work is gradequiz.php and then there needs to be two variables on the query string. And those two variables are the answer for question one and the answer for question two. And they need to be called answer one and answer two. Why do they need to be called answer one and answer two? Because that's what the server expects. All right? It doesn't matter if we call them answer one and answer two. We could call them A1 and A2. But whatever the client creates, that better be what the server expects. Otherwise, there's going to be a miscommunication between the two. All right? So it's critical to know how the request is going to be made. And again, since when you create this, you're responsible for both the client and the server side code, you get to choose the way the request is going to look. So you get to choose the name of the URL, which is grade quiz. You get to choose how the data is passed on the query string. All right? The names of the variables and um, that, that you're going to call it. All right? And then you're responsible for making that request to the server. So we make the request by looking at the values from the forms and formatting that request. We fill in a couple variables. And then our request becomes grade quiz, question mark, answer one equals A1, answer two equals A2. Um, we then set our ready state and then make the request. The server does its thing, produces the results. That display results method gets called because anytime the status of the request gets updated, this gets called. A ready state of four means that the server is done. So the client can take the response that it got back from the server, which is stored in the variable response text, and then do something with it. Okay, so let's analyze what the key parts of this are for troubleshooting. All right. First and foremost, you're going to look at any errors that the browser generates. Right? So if you ran this, if you wrote some code and it didn't work, the first thing that you would do is you would make sure that um, you, you look at your JavaScript uh, console and see if your browser has detected any errors. All right. Because if there's any errors there, that could prevent anything from happening and you won't get the correct results. So that's the first thing you're going to do. Second thing I would do is at least in development mode, I would have my PHP errors turned on. All right. Because by default, if you just install PHP, those errors are typically suppressed, which means that you won't get anything back from the server and that's not very effective as far as troubleshooting goes. All right. The next thing I would do is I would make sure that the client and server are communicating correctly. All right. In other words, remember, the client is responsible for making the request. And in our case, the request should look like this. Grade quiz dot PHP. Question mark answer one equals something and then answer two equals something. So that's what the request to the server needs to look at. 
look like. That's what we decided. All right, there's nothing magical about that. We decided this is the way it's going to be. All right. For the request, we need the URL that we're going to call, and we need to decide how we're going to pass the data. And in our case, we're going to pass it on the query string. We're going to call each answer, answer one, answer two, answer three, and so on. And then it needs to be formatted this way in order to work. So that is the request that's going to be made to the client. So we need to make sure that that request is being made correctly. The second thing we have to do is we have to make sure that the server responds in the way that we expected. In our case, we expect to be the response to look something like this. A Y or an N, depending on whether they got the question right or wrong, and those values separated by commas. So that's what we need to make sure is happening. If that is happening, and we're still not getting the correct results, then we've pretty much isolated the problem to one particular function on the client side, and we can go from there. All right? So let me show you how I would troubleshoot this. I would troubleshoot this, first of all, by looking at the server side. I'm going to look at the server side code first. All right? That might be counterintuitive, right, because the client side sort of gets the ball running. Do keep in mind that you could do this a couple different ways. I'm just describing the way that I would do it. All right. Why do you suppose I say I would tr uh, troubleshoot the server side first? Okay, that's true. We have to make sure that it is accepting the request in the format that we expected. That's true. It's a little simpler than that, though, even. The reason I'm tr uh, troubleshooting the server side first is because the server side is typically going to be simpler code. All right. The server side simply takes the value and produces the results. Remember, in AJAX, really, a lot of the work is going to be on the client side. The client side has more responsibilities. The client side has to make the request. The client side has to format the output from the server. The server simply has to take the request and produce the output. So, I don't know, you could do it either way. But the first thing I would do is I would troubleshoot the server side. Now, how do you suppose I'm going to troubleshoot the server side? Well, Troubleshoot the server side by typing in the request that the client side is going to make in my browser window and seeing if the server side produces the results I would expect. So, what do I expect the client side? to send to the server, I expect it to be to send grade quiz dot php question mark answer one equals no ampersand answer two equals also no. Those are the two correct answers. If the server gets this, what should the response be from the server? If the server gets this, what should the response be? Well, are those the correct answers? Yes. So the server should respond with what? Y, comma, Y. 
So how am I going to test that? Well, I'm going to take this URL, and I'm just going to put it up as though it was a standalone request. I'm going to forget that we're doing AJAX for a minute, and I'm just going to type in the URL. So I just type in the URL what the client is supposed to be sending it. All right. Can I do that? Of course I can do that. This is a PHP script like any other script. Now, it's written to be part of an AJAX process, but we certainly could call it in a standalone mode like we're doing here. So I'm going to type in the URL and see what I get back. And in this case, I get back N and N. Hmm. Something isn't right. I think I know what it is. It's actually execute. It's actually expecting a T or an F, not a Y or an N. So I was wrong when I did this. It's expecting an F and an F. Less important to know, though, right? <laughs> so it's expecting an F and F. So now I go and run it, and There I get my Y and N. And I can play with this to make sure it gets the expected results. In other words, what if they answer true to the first question? Then I get an N and Y. What if they answer true to the second question? Then I get an N and N. So I'm verifying that the server independently does the job that it's supposed to do. What's the server's job? Really, it has one job. It takes a request, processes it, and returns the result. And in this case, it's pretty clear that the, that the server, when you give it what it expects, produces the correct results. All right? Other than my little misfire at the beginning when I didn't give a T or F. All right? So, I've now verified that the server works. So, I know that the server, if you give it the request in the format that it's expecting, produces the correct results. Now, I just have to make sure that the client is preparing the request correctly. So, I'm going to go in and I'm going to break the client. get rid of an ampersand. So now, tells you they're both wrong, okay? Now, I know I verified a second ago that the server when I give it the correct format of the request, produces the correct results. All right? That's what 
I did when I typed in, and I can verify it again by putting in grade quiz F and F. It gives me the correct results. It gives me Y and Y. Yet when I run it from the client, it doesn't give me the correct results. It tells me that both the questions are wrong. By verifying that the server does its job correctly, I know the problem has to be with the client. And there could be two potential problems with the client. Number one, it could be that it's not creating the correct request, creating the request formatted properly in a way that the server is expecting it. That's one possibility. The other possibility is it's creating the request correctly, getting the correct response from the server, but it's handling the response incorrectly. All right? So what I have to do is I have to test, and again, I'm going to actually do things to test in a systematic way. I'm not just going to stare at the code and hope that it jumps out at me, but I'm going to test to make sure and to find out which of those two things are going wrong. All right. So remember, I've already verified that the server-side code works insofar as if I give it the correct formatted request, it produces the correct output. If I type in the URL, gradequiz.php, question mark, answer 1 equals F, semicolon, answer 2 equals F, it tells me, yes, question one is right, comma, yes, question two is right. So I know that something's going wrong with the client. Either it's not formatting the request correctly, or it's mishandling the results. So how am I going to determine which of those things are? Well, I'm going to put an alert in my code that is going to display the request as the client is making it. An alert is just a little box that pops up on your screen and I can put anything in there and in my case I'm going to put the actual value of the request being made. Right? This is the request that's being made to the server. So I simply copied it into an alert. So my alert is going to pop up and it's going to show me the value of the request being made. Then I can look at it and decide, yes, that's correct, or no, that's incorrect. So, I'm going to copy that guy over. can answer false and false and click calculate and my alert shows the exact value of the request being made. Now if we look at this closely it says grade quiz dot PHP so far so good answer one equals F and then there's no ampersand between the F and the answer two. So in other words the request that the client side is making is not correct. It's not formatted correct, because if we remember, the request that the server needs should look like this, with an ampersand between answer one and answer two. So, we found the culprit here. The culprit is that the client side is not formatting the request correctly. So we can correct it. and then be on our way. And now 
if we look? Yeah, it gives the right answer. So, here's sort of my troubleshooting process so far. We're about two-thirds of the way done. Number one, we verify that when you give the server the correct request, it produces the output that you expect. So when I format the request correct and when I just type it into the address bar of my browser, the script should run and it should give me the output in the format that I'm expecting. So if I'm expecting Y comma N, that's what I get, Y comma N. All right? Not Y N or anything like that. Once I verify that, then I'm pretty sure that the problem is on the client side. And there's two main possibilities on the client side. Number one, it's not formatting the correct request. It's not formatting the request correctly. All right, it's either calling the wrong URL or it's not passing the data on the query string correctly. Or number two, it's not handling the results correctly. So let's go and let's break my client side code again. And I'm going to change it so I'm expecting a lowercase y from the server. Not an uppercase y. So now, if I answer this and this, well, I only made the change in one place. Let me, let me do it in the second place as well. I only did it for question one. Let's do question two as well. tells me they're both wrong. All right. Well, how would I troubleshoot this? Well, I would troubleshoot the server, make sure that I am, if I give the request format the correct way, I am getting the response formatted the correct way. I would put the alert in to verify that the client side is making the request correctly. Let's assume that we've done both of those and those work. The last thing I would do is I would make sure that the client side is getting back what it's expecting. So, how do I do that? I do that with an alert. How does the data come back from the client and the server? It comes back in the form of the response text. So one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to put two alerts in my code. I'm going to show the status because that's what the ready state is. And I'm going to show the response text, because that's the response that I'm getting back from the server. state change function correctly, or I'm pointing to a wrong function. Because when I define this as the on ready state change function, I'm saying every time that request status gets updated, 
is going to display the status. If it never displays the status, then I didn't declare the on ready state function, on ready state change function correctly. So the first thing I got to do is I have to make sure this function is even getting called. So I'm going to display the status. So I better see something there, otherwise I haven't defined this correctly. Second thing I'm going to do is when the ready state is 4, in other words, when I have a response from the server, I'm going to display the value of the response text through an alert. So I'm going to say alert response colon plus response text. And in that way I can get and I can make sure that what the server is returning matches what the client is expecting. So I'm going to copy that over. Now if I run this and I put in false and false, I click calculate, there's a ready state of 2, which means I think that the server has gotten a request. Ready state of 3 means the server is, is just about finished and just about ready to send the result back. Status of 4 means that the server is complete. So our next alert, it should show the value of the response text. And sure enough, there's the value of the response text, capital Y and capital Y. If I look at my JavaScript code, it's not expecting a capital Y, it's expecting a lowercase y. Therefore, I know that there's a problem. So all I need to do then is correct this, which I knew anyhow because I watched myself break it. But... And I should be back. Whoops. Should be back in business. So if I was going to define the approach for debugging AJAX, the approach I take, and again, you could, you could do this in slightly different order, I would, number one, I would make sure that I understand how I think the request is to be formatted and how I expect the server to send the data back to the client. So in this case, I define that this is what I expect the request to look like. This is what I expect the response to come back to the client from the server. I would verify the server code first by just typing in the URL and making sure that when I pass the data correctly, and when I format the request correctly, that the server code responds in the manner that I'm expecting. So, if I know that this is the way that I'm expecting the server to get the request, if I type that in, I ought to get the response that I'm expecting. If it returns it without a comma, for example, or whatever, then I know that, hey, that's part of my problem. That's one thing to keep in mind as well. Um, I'm talking about this as though there is one single problem with your code. There could be multiple problems with your code. So just when you find one problem doesn't mean that you can call it a day. You need to continue testing to make sure that once you've corrected the one problem, there aren't some other problems that, that maybe are also given you difficulty. 
So I verify that the server-side code works by typing in manually the URL with the query string formatted in the way that the server-side is expecting. I then look and make sure that the output from the server matches the output that I'm expecting. Remember, the server is not going to be producing uh, an entire web page. It's going to be simply producing some data. And in this case, it's simply producing a string of data, Y's and N's. All right, indicating whether they got the correct cor question correct or incorrect. A comma, and then the answer for the second one. So that's what I would verify. Second thing I would verify is I'd make sure that the client is producing the request in the form I'm expecting by putting an alert in the client side code right before it makes the request to the server. So right here, I would put an alert in to make sure that this is the format that the server is expecting. I would then put alerts in the display results. And first of all, I'd make sure that they got called. If they didn't get called, then I didn't define this correctly. But I would make sure that this is getting called, and I would make sure that the data coming back from the server is what the client is expecting. That, in a nutshell, is a systematic way for troubleshooting. Now, there's two things I mentioned right off that you ought to do. All right. Number one is make sure that when you're in development mode that you have PHP error reporting enabled. All right. The other thing is verify if you have any JavaScript errors. And where those uh, errors get reported dependent on the browser that you're running. If you're running, for example, Google Chrome, as I am, you would go up here, More Tools, Developers Tools, and you would look at the console. In my case, there's nothing in the console, therefore there's no JavaScript there. But if I made a mistake in my code, Again, element by ID, let's say, with a capital D. So now I click the calculate, I don't get any response back, but I get a JavaScript error. So first thing you should do if you don't get any results is verify that you're not getting any JavaScript error. And then correspondingly verify that you are not getting any client side, I'm sorry, server side error.
things that I can teach you is um, teach you good debugging techniques. All right. Um, because it's inevitable that you're going to run into problems. All right. You're, 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 you're not going to write code that works completely 100% correctly all the time. And you're going to run into problems. And therefore, if you practice good development, uh, or debugging skills, rather, that will really go a long way. Um, the fundamental principle, I guess, that I would say is to have some sort of systematic approach where you narrow down where the problem is until you can isolate it and then ultimately correct it. Now, I didn't show what, what, what you need to do to correct the problem in, in most of these cases. Most of these cases, my, the problems that I introduced were very simple. Like I was looking for a lowercase y instead of an uppercase y, or I forgot an ampersand or whatever. All right? But really, half the battle is isolating to the section of code where there's a problem. And once you have that, then you can eyeball it and look for things that are wrong or, or whatever. All right? The problem comes into when you're trying to eyeball the whole program, or in the case of AJAX, two programs, the client side and the server side script. That's where it's easy to get overwhelmed and it's easy to get tripped up and not be able to focus and, and find um, what's, what's causing the difficulty. All right, so a couple things. We're not done with this yet, right? We'd have to finish up the validation, which we might do next time. But there's something else about this code that bothers me, besides the fact that there isn't a validation. And it bothers me both in the client side and the server side. Here's the client side code. There's the client side code to create the request, here's a client-side code to process the results, and then here's the server-side code. What do you suppose bothers me about both these chunks of code? Remember Pee Wee Herman and his word of the day, where you scream whenever you hear the word of the day. I think I talked about that in this class, right? I, I, I get confused. Sometimes I say things in one class or another, and I'm not sure. But what ought to make programmers scream when they see something? Repetition, duplication of code. When you see duplication of code, that's a sign that you probably could improve your code. All right? Now, again, we've started off very small in this example. We've started with one question on our quiz, and we added a second question. But as you imagine, if we were to expand this and we were to add a third, fourth, fifth, tenth, twentieth question, we would have a block of code which, was, which would essentially be the same code repeated 10 times, 20 times, however many questions there were. All right? Well, that's not good, right? That's not good for a lot of reasons. Number one, it's not good because if you have to go back and change something, if there's a bug or whatever, you have to go and change that code in a bunch of places. It's also not good because, again, if I were to add a question in, I'd have to duplicate a whole section of code again. So it's much better to try to write clever code instead of doing the brute force method. When you have a block of code repeated like this, that's sort of the brute force method. 
we can get it to work. And what's the problem with it, taking that brute, appro uh, brute force approach? The problem comes into when we have to go and change the code. And changing the code is something that's inevitable. We're always going to be changing our code for one reason or another, for bugs, for enhancements, for whatever. Therefore, if we have code written without any repetition in it, we only have to change one section of the code and have, instead of having to change 20 or, or 10 or however many sections of code. So one thing I would like to ask you to do before next time is imagine this with 10 questions. And imagine what the code would look like if we took this brute force uh, approach. It's actually pretty easy. We'd simply have something like this repeated 10 times. All right? In the client side, we would have something like this repeated 10 times. And then something like that repeated 10 times. Okay, so it's pretty easy to imagine this code if we took the brute force method. What I'd like you to do is think of what the code would look like if we took a more clever approach to it and didn't duplicate the code but wrote our code so that it didn't matter how many questions there were, it could cleanly handle and create those questions. So that's my challenge for you to think about for Wednesday's class. Then in Wednesday's class, we'll work through a solution for that. All right, any questions? All right, we'll see you over in lab.